This brief demonstration will show how easy it is to load a sample into the Chromosome Analysis Suite browser and through the use of a cytoregion and an overlap map file as well as querying the database how quickly one can put annotation and interpretation to a particular sample. So first we're going to load our sample by going to File Open and we're going to load this constitutional blood sample. Then we are going to go through and using the same file open load two AED files. These are Affymetrix's version of a bed file which contain cytoregions that we're interested in that are clinically relevant and the other will be regions that are known to be uh, artifactual throughout the genome. So here we're looking at one sample in our browser. We have various external reference annotations that we can select. We have the Cario view that we're looking at a whole genome view. Down here is the detail view and right now we're, look, we're clicked on chromosome 22. So this is the view of chromosome 22 and the raw data. As well as the various data tracks that we can turn on or off. I'm going to go to the segments table. I'm going to choose my named setting of interest. In this case I'm going to choose cytoregions. And what this means is every 50 markers and 50 KB for gains in order for a segment to be drawn and 25 markers and 25 KB for a loss segment to be drawn. So as you can see right here we have 13 segments. I'm going to uncheck the LOH for right now we're going to concentrate on our copy number segments first. So we have our file type. I'm going to scroll over. We get the copy number state, whether it was a gain or loss, and the location. And now I have two columns, one for cytoregions and one for I'm going to set the decipher developmental delay genotype to phenotype bed file as the cytoregions file. We now get vertical gray bars, which highlight the regions in my AED file that are clinically relevant. I'm then going to assign my common artifacts file as the overlap map. These are regions of the genome that may be segmental duplications or are just known to be found in, in several samples to come up that are not clinically relevant. So I have my cytoregions column and my overlap map. I'm going to keep them in the field of view. I have a call and interpretation field which I can then assign as I go through my segments whether I think it's pathogenic or benign and give some interpretation to that segment. If I have any inheritance information I can enter it here. Here's the location of that particular segment with the chromosome start and stop. And now I have three columns on showing me which segments in my database overlap or intersect with my segment in my current sample. So let's go ahead and we'll click on the first row that jumps me to this particular segment here. I can see I have a, a loss. Below I'm showing histograms for all the blood samples in my database and which segments have been shown to have gains or losses. So in this case I have seen something in this region before. It does overlap with my overlap map. So I, I do know from my overlap map that this region of 11Q11 is known to be artifactual. But I can go ahead and check my database by right clicking and choosing Query ChasDB, bringing up my segment intersections to see my current segment here. What does it intersect with in my database? And as I can see, the breakpoints are pretty consistent. The blue lines, the vertical blue lines. And all the calls are benign in this case, or three of the five calls that I have interpreted previously. So since this overlaps with my overlap map, I'm feeling pretty good. I can call that benign and then add an interpretation of 11Q11. I can go on to the next one now. 14Q. I have seen it seven times before. Again, it's part of my overlap map. I can see that I've seen it several times before. 
if I wanted to I could just right click in this region and say show me what I've got ah yes I've called it benign all the time and uh, it's because it's part of the IGH region so I'll call that benign 20 uh, it's not part of my cyto regions this particular segment it's not part of my overlap map and I haven't seen it before I have zero calls in this region so now I can start looking using the external resources that I have for instance the RevSeq genes to see ah yes I do have RevSeq genes I can look at the database of genomic variants to see if there's any overlapping genomic variants there is one it doesn't overlap the entire length of my segment I can also look at the OMIM genes. I can see that there have been some OMIM genes. I can then link out externally to UCSC and NCBI and Ensemble to look in the literature to see if these particular genes might be clinically relevant for my particular sample. In this case, I see that uh, there is no phenotype associated with these OMIM genes, so I'm going to say that this is likely benign. I go on to my next segment. Okay, I can see that I do have some cytoregions that overlap with this particular segment. As I can also see with the gray highlighted bars, showing me that this particular segment overlaps with some cytoregions. And I have seen a case like this before. So let me go ahead and query the database and see what I called it before. This segment is a little bit larger, but very close to the segment that I had previously which was also a loss and I called it pathogenic. It was a 22Q11.2 deletion. And my overlap is 100%, meaning that my segment overlaps this by 100% and 87% of my segment is covered by the segment in the database, which was also a blood sample. So I can now go in, I think that's pathogenic, it looks very similar to what I've seen before, which was a 22Q11.2 22 deletion. Again, I have my overlap map. I haven't seen it before, but I am 100% overlapping a region that I've seen previously, or, or have, have known to be artifactual. And same with this region on 8P. So I can call those benign as well. Here I am on chromosome X. Haven't seen it in my database before as I have zero segments. And it does not overlap any of my cytoregions or my overlap map. So again, like we did previously, we can come in here. We do have the genes track turned on and we can see that there's no genes or no OMIM genes that overlap. So this region is probably not clinically relevant. So I'm going to go ahead and call that benign. And I can put in any sort of interpretation that I want. For instance, does not overlap any clinically relevant genes. Okay, so I have now looked at all the copy number segments in my sample, and I believe I have found what is to be pathogenic because I have seen it before in my, my database. So now I'm going to right click on this particular sample, view edit properties, and now I can add some sample level annotation to it. This was a blood sample. I can right click in here to choose from a, a list of various phenotypes. Or I can free type in a particular phenotype. My interpretation in this case is going to be a, again, it's free text, so you can type in anything you want. I'm going to type in that it was a 22Q11.2 deletion. Say OK. And now, by using my cytoregions and my overlap map, as well as the segments that I have in my database, I have quickly gone through and assigned either some sort of call, whether it be benign or pathogenic, to each one of my segments, as well as an overall sample interpretation. I can now upload this file by right-clicking on it and choosing Publish File to Database. It's letting me know that the copy number segments will be uploaded, and I say OK. The files were successfully published, 
and we can see we get new counts here that are reflected immediately in the database count both. So for instance, before I had seen it one time, now I see this segment, this pathogenic segment twice because it's counting this sample that I just uploaded. For more details on each one of these individual features, please go to our website. In the tutorials section, there are various training videos that outline each one of the functions that I just demonstrated. Thank you.